Hello everyone, I am Vaishnav Achat from Texas Instruments and today I would like to talk to you about emulating devices in the Linux kernel using the Graber subsystem. I work with the Texas Instruments Linux development team and mainly work on upstream Linux and U-boot development for TI processor devices. During my free time, I also try to maintain the TI platforms in the Sephir Artos and uh, I got introduced to the Graber subsystem in Linux as part of a Google Summer of Code project while I was a student. Uh, and it was related to adding add-on board enumeration support in Linux using the Graber subsystem. So this is the overview of the talk. The presentation is based on a proof of concept to emulate devices in Linux using the Graber subsystem and using it for ca use cases like automated uh, testing for device drivers. So first, why would someone want to emulate devices in the Linux kernel? By emulate, I mean uh, reproducing the functionality of an actual device in software and um, uh, and making the devices appear in as in the as per the driver model in device driver model in Linux. So. There are multiple use cases. Most important one of them is automated testing for device drivers, libraries, and user space applications. As you know, Linux kernel has a huge collection of device drivers, and automated testing for them is a challenge. Uh, and if you want to test all, all of these device drivers on actual hardware, you will need a huge test farm with all of the supported devices with the device drivers in the Linux kernel. So, Testing on an emulated platform makes much sense. So we will be discussing about how we can emulate devices and what are all the existing methods to emulate devices that exist. And one other use case is, let's say you have a behavioral model of your device and actual device or the silicon is not available yet. And then you want to de develop device drivers for those and you can have a behavioral model and make it appear as a device on the Linux kernel and do the driver development. Another use case is, let's say you have some subsystem level bugs that, or uh, uh, issues that are not dependent on the particular hardware, then it will be much easier to reproduce these issues through, through some record and playback. Uh, so you don't need to have access to the particular devices in the field to record and playback and recreate those bugs. So what are the current ways you can emulate devices in Linux? So you will all, all be knowing about QMU, which you can use to emulate machines or systems, and it allows you to, sorry, it allows you to even emulate complex systems consisting of SOCs with multiple peripherals like network cards and all. And there is something called UMOC dev, which is, allows you to emulate devices in user space. It is mostly used for user space library testing. It allows you to create arbitrary CSFS entries, then uh, fake uh, block and care devices, and you can test your user space application or library API using the UMOC dev. Then there is something called USB IP, which is a project to export USB interface over the IP or an IP network and you can extend this to emulate a, a USB devices in your system. And then there is something called GBSIM that is part of already the Graber subsystem which emulates uh, a, an arbitrary set of project ARA modules. But the focus of the GBSIM was to actually test Graber's but it does not enumerate any device drivers or uh, perform, any, allow, perform testing for a device driver. So what's Grebus? If you are not aware of Grebus, Grebus is an application layer protocol which was developed as part of Google's Project Terra modular smartphone. So the idea of this Project Terra modular smartphone was that you will have a base module which will have a minimal set of uh, features like you'll have the processors and all, and then you'll have multiple modules, say camera modules, display modules, speakers and all. And you will be able to customize your phone as per your requirements. And the underlying subsystem or the software architecture that helps with the enumeration and working of these modules is Grebus. And Grebus has its strong roots in the Linux kernel. 
So the fundamental idea of gray bus is keeping the intelligence in, in, within the host. So if you look at this, you'll have these base modules uh, 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 or the base smartphone that has the processor and all the intelligence is within the host. All these modules or the, let's say you take a camera, you plug in that, the camera it's by itself does not have any intelligence. The, the application processor on the base module sends transactions over the Grebus protocol to these modules, then the module performs operation like let's say taking the picture, then uh, sends back the data to the application processor all through the Grebus protocol. And the Grebus is unique because you can think of Grebus like any remote procedure call like protocol where you send uh, RPC calls to a remote module. Um, in this case, it's an external module which sits on the Unipro bus and you, you perform the operations on the remote node and you return back the results to the application processor. But Graybus is unique because it has strong roots within multiple Linux kernel subsystem and you can create virtual devices in the Linux kernel subsystem. So let's say you plug in a camera to your projector or motor modes phone, you will have a virtual device or virtual camera that uh, node that appears on your host processor and you will be using the device as if it was actually on the host but not as an external entity and over when you perform some operations on these virtual devices or the controllers those operations are converted to grebus operations and uh, sent to the modules and the module performs the necessary actions so in short grebus allows the uh, peripherals on a remote device to appear as if they were on a host. So in, uh, with the project era, the actual transport layer used was Unipro, which is a high speed uh, protocol, MIPI standard protocol. Uh, but Grebus by design does not uh, necessitate in any uh, particular transport. It can work on any arbitrary transport. So one of the popular transport used is TCP IP because you can then convert TCP IP over anything. and it can even work on, it has been experimented on UART as well. So you can see that this snapshot, I have uh, uh, I2C controller on a remote microcontroller that's appearing on my host uh, over gray bus. And if I perform operations on this I2C, uh, virtual I2C device, it will go, the operations will actually be performed on the remote device. And all these transactions you will be doing as per the standard, it will appear as a standard Linux I2C controller spy. Or, and you can see that Grebus supports multiple subsystems and even complex subsystems like camera, display and all. So in the typical emulation uh, mechanisms that we discussed earlier that it is difficult to emulate a complex module. Let's say you have a camera, you have a camera control is in interface over the I2C, then you have the camera data interface. So emulating such complex systems is difficult with the existing platforms, but Grebus by design has a, an arc, uh, a concept called bundle, where you bundle multiple controllers together as an entity. So a, a camera will have, it will be considered as an, a bundle of I2C than the, the CSI2 interface or similar ones. So how does Grebus, what's the fundamental Grebus, how does a Grebus operation looks like? So Grebus packetizes all these uh, transactions on these virtual controllers and sends over to the remote device. So the Grebus operation looks like this. It will have a small header, which uh, you can see it has the size of the actual message. Then the ID, it's used to uh, track the all, all the messages. So when the responses come back, it's matched based on the ID. Then the type is what uh, uh, tells you what operation it is to perform. So let's say you have your host processor which runs the Grebus host Linux kernel and you have a remote mic microcontroller which has the remote node firmware of Grebus. Let's say you want to toggle a GPIO over Grebus. What will happen is you want to send a, something called a GPIO set value request. You can even trigger it through the user space, but what happens under the hood is something like a message like this will be sent to the, from the host processor to the uh, remote node, and the remote node will have the uh, basic firmware to uh, perform this operation. So it will decode uh, this message to get the uh, GPIO line offset and value and perform the GPIO operation. Uh, 
and then return back the response. So unfortunately, the modular smartphones are not being actively developed for now. And one of the important use cases that is emerging is being uh, Grebus being used in Internet of Things applications. So in this case, uh, in, uh, from uh, comparing to our earlier uh, modular smartphone, instead of the base smartphone, we have something like a, a, a Linux, uh, the, a single board computer running Linux. And instead of the individual modules, you'll have some microcontrollers. And in the actual smartphone concept, it was physically attached to the smartphone, but we know Gerebus does not necessitate any tra particular transport. So we can have the uh, transport as TCP IP over a wireless network as well. So your smartphone with modules attached is now for an IoT application becomes a single board computer gateway and you have multiple nodes uh, spread across your uh, deployment system. So what will happen is you will have peripherals on your remote microcontroller node that will appear on your uh, Linux SBC. So I have a recorded video here. So what I am doing is in the uh, host, this is the host running the, the host is a Beagle board, Beagle Play SBC. And I am starting a gateway application which allows you to send the Grebus messages from the um, kernel to the uh, remote node. The remote microcontroller is the device you see on the top. It works over uh, sub gigahertz uh, uh, low power RF. Uh, so we send the, this package. So at the earlier we saw the Grebus messages. We send those messages over TCP IP. Then we, the remote node will have something like a very generic firmware. It won't have anything. It will say it will have the firmware to let's say take an input, like uh, you, it can perform, let's say you send an I square C transfer, it can decode the operation, perform the transfer and th send back the results. So uh, in this case, oh, this remote microcontroller has some sensor devices, which has device drivers on the Linux kernel. So how this concept becomes powerful is that your remote microcontroller only has some generic firmware that can translate this I square C or GPIO operations to on, on, the, on that particular platform. But let's say you take something like an I square C sensor, you can have a device driver on the Linux kernel. And we already discussed that the, the I square C bus of the remote controller appears as a virtual bus on the host. So let's say I have a light sensor on this microcontroller. I can probe a device driver on the host to uh, interface with this sensor. So the advantage is that I don't need to do any low level firmware development on the remote microcontroller side. I'm keeping all the intelligence within the host, which was what already was being done with the project ARA smartphone project. So Gravis changes uh, the operations, uh, all these uh, operations on the uh, remote, uh, the host to the Gabriel operation messages and the remote node performs this operation. So from a kernel Grebus perspective, there they need not be an actual device. So let's say you have, you send a GPIO uh, get value request. Let's say some entity responds back with the proper Grebus response. Then the, we can, uh, the Linux kernel Grebus subsystem will think that there is an actual uh, Grebus device there. So this need not be an actual device, but we can emulate uh, as a software entity within the uh, host uh, you, uh, device itself. And you can do it in multiple ways. Let's say you, in the previous uh, example, I had uh, some light sensor that has been uh, fetched over Grebus um, from the host. So I can record those transactions, what happened during uh, a device driver probe for that light sensor. So then what happens during the when I fetch uh, the illuminance input reading. And then I can play back these operations and then create a fake device. And But to the kernel or, or the host system, it won't appear like a fake device, but it's uh, the transactions are actual transaction, valid transaction happening over Grebus. Uh, 
Then you can do other ways as well. You can Im uh, implement handlers in user space. This will be very useful if you want to write unit, unit tests uh, for your device drivers. Then there is also another con uh, 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 concept called native POSIX target in the Sefer RTOS, which allows you to run a Sefer RTOS application as uh, a, as a general Linux application on your host. So uh, there was, has been already efforts being done to port the Sapphire remote device firmware to the Sapphire Atos. So we, you can, it was basically focused to run on microcontrollers, uh, but you can run the same um, exact same application on the, your Linux host using the Sapphire's native POS6 target. So before we go into how we can emulate uh, or create fake or uh, grabus uh, controllers on, on the user space, we can have a look at what are all the important operations. So we'll be discussing about uh, creating a GPIO controller and also an I2C controller and attaching devices on it. So on a GPIO controller, the important operations are listed here. So things like get value, set value, or gets the chain gets the on an actual device it will fetch the uh, details from the controller registers or write to the controller registers based on these uh, uh, the api calls so on a uh, virtual or the emulated uh, gpa controller what, what we can do is we can just so i just chose python to uh, create these handlers. So these handlers will just, uh, instead of uh, emulate the remote device, it will fetch grabus messages that's coming from the kernel. It will do uh, some operations. Maybe it will be just storing the context, maybe uh, or maybe sending the res responses back. Um, so in this case of a GPIO controller, what I'm doing is I'm just storing the context of the I/O states. Let's say if I receive initially, I'll set all the IO states the default value. If I receive a GPIO set request or get request, accordingly I'll set change the GPIO uh, values or get the fetch the existing values. And similarly, uh, you saw the previous slide where all the API was described. So we implement all the handlers for um, all the uh, Grebus GPIO operations. So this is a virtual GPIO controller that got created and you can use standard Linux libgpio D utilities to interact with this GPA controller. So, uh, and then you can even perform some simple unit testing on this emulated GPIO chip. So it's a very, very basic test. You are just setting the um, GPIO states using libgpio D API and going and checking the controller if the actual uh, GPIO set has taken place. So in this case, you are actually testing the entire from the Python bindings for libgpioD to the libgpioD API to the Linux kernel GPIO subsystem. So you are uh, you can test the entire system. So I am uh, so you can see the virtual GPIO chip created. So the first one is the one that that was actually being present on my laptop. And the second one is the Grebus GPIO chip created. So you can create with an arbitrary set of parameters. You can play around with NGPIO or anything and emulate systems according to your use case. So this is a very simple test, just checking whether the controllers, uh, the GPIO set has worked properly. Similarly, on uh, we consider the case of an I square C controller as well. In the case of the GPIO controller, it was very simple because you can just set get or maybe trigger IRQs on all those operations on on the GPIO controller. But in that case, you are emulating system is limited within that GPIO controller itself. But in case of an I square C controller, you will have devices. You will have the emulated I square C controller and you will have devices on those emulated I square C controller. So if you consider this case, it, this can be generalized to almost most of the embedded buses like SPY or UART as well. 
So you can see the, in I, I square C, there, uh, the, the, there is only a minimal number of gray bus operations. And the main one is just transfer. All the I square C relevant transfer uh, operations are contained within just that uh, operation type. So in this case, you can just implement some handlers that will fetch, uh, get, receive the messages. So if you look at this protocol functionality, I am advertising that my virtual I square C controller has supports all these uh, transactions. And on transfer, if, if, if you look at an actual I square C controller, you, we need to put the transfers on the I square C bus and some devices need to acknowledge and respond back to those transfers. So if you look at the symbol on I have emulated, you can see uh, if I run something like an I square C detect, there is no device to respond to. And, but to create an actual uh, useful system, you will need to have devices on this virtual I square C controller. So then you will need to translate all the incoming grabbers and uh, the I square C messages and put it on something like a, uh, an emulated I square C bus, uh, which, to which you can attach the devices. So it will be similar to how that physical connectivity looks like. You will have your I square C controller, then you will have your I square C bus, and on those you will have the devices connected. Similar to that, we create uh, something like that in software. So you can see. So I I, I have a virtual I square C bus called I square C 10 on my device, and using this new device API, we I'm probing the device driver for something like called an OPT 307 uh, light sensor. Uh, in the previous case where we had one demo with the BeagleBoard and the remote microcontroller, it was the exact same sensor that was present on the remote microcontroller node. But this time we are emulating that sensor on a virtual bus that's uh, emulated on the host itself. And during the device driver probe, there happens some operations like the, the reading the device ID registers and all. And the probe being successful means we have emulated the device. And then we can perform uh, the readings of the sensor values using standard uh, utilities. So similar to the GPIO case, I have handlers and then uh, I have uh, the device, uh, the light sensor device being emulated. So you can see that's the application where the, that gray bus transaction happens. It's doing a hex dump of all the gray bus operations. And you can see that the uh, gray bus uh, device was uh, probed and you can see there will be a I square C device, uh, a controller that was created, a new controller that was created. And that name is gray bus I square C adapter. So for creating all these virtual devices on the Linux use side, you don't need to do anything. Everything is already present in the Linux kernel. Just to respond back with the proper responses, you will need to have some handlers in the uh, user space. So if you can see that uh, the, the light sensor appears as a IIO device, then I can use the, you can, you'll have the standard CFS entries. Uh, for the IIO device, then I can use tools like IIO info to read the light sensor value. You can see, so in the my uh, the model for the light sensor, I have put the illuminance value as a random value, so it will return a random illuminance value each time. So you can do testing like there are there are um, uh, different integration time values possible. You can do different. Um, uh, testing on this device driver by emulating the uh, register values on the uh, user space side. Yeah, and I am almost done with my slides. So uh, there are already existing mechanisms to emulate devices in the Linux kernel, but Grabus by itself, it was designed to uh, uh, interface complex module with the modular smartphone and it supports uh, uh, describing uh, devices that are complex like camera or display which needs multiple uh, subsystem interaction or multiple entities to work properly. As I discussed before, like let's say you take a uh, camera sensor, you will need your I square C interface, then you will need your CSI tool data interface and uh, or maybe if you take some simple example, 
like a sensor, uh, an I2C sensor which has GPIO IR queues, which is something like a ready signal. It will trigger when the conversion is ready. And let's say there is a GPIO enable. So to emulate this device, you need to have an I2C client device and also a GPIO consumer device to uh, emulate this complete uh, unit uh, of, of the I2C sensor with interrupts and enable GPIO. So Grebus was all designed to uh, describe devices like this. And if you can send the uh, proper responses uh, to the Linux kernel Grebus subsystem, you can have virtual devices like this created in, in the Linux. And also, he, in, in this case, I kind of wrote those handlers from scratch. But you can make reuse the effort that was done for the Grebus Sapphire port and using the native POSIX target. And uh, you don't need to write those I2C handlers and all because the, the remote site firmware already implements that. And since this, this is just an application layer protocol, you can have that same application run on your uh, host Linux system as well. Yeah, I'm done with my slide. I'm open for questions if you have any. Thank you. I have a question. So actually, what kind of devices we cannot uh, emulate using, using, yeah, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, so uh, in, if you look at the, what Grebus, usually it's the controller side that Grebus uh, packetizes those transactions. So you cannot, let's say you want to emulate a spy controller. You cannot do that because the spy controller, this Grebus spy controller is a virtual spy controller. So you cannot do devices like that. You can do emulate devices like the only the client devices. Thank you.